Hi friends! I am here sitting in my car again, like my last Facebook Live, and I want to talk to you today, and this is called Penny's Heart to Heart. It's what I call these when I go live and talk to you about what I wrote on my um, blog posts, Writings from the Corner of Spirit and Brave. And two weeks ago, I wrote about who is chauffeuring your life. And I talked about the stories that we pick up in our life and how they become our navigators. And we tell those stories over and over again. And they become who we are. They become the story of our life. And some of them are good and some of them not so good. And it's up to us to pick and choose which ones we want to use to navigate our life and, and not. So I do these heart to heart lives and I talk about why I wrote what I wrote. Last time when I was doing the live about who is chauffeuring your life, I made a comment about backseat drivers and how sometimes it's not just our stories that we allow to take over our life, but it's backseat drivers that kind of tell us what to do in life and control us in ways that even if they're not verbally telling us what to do, they still control our actions and how we live. And maybe those backseat drivers are not always the best for us. So I made a comment about backseat drivers. And in that live, I always talk about how I like to hear from you all and hear your comments and, and I like you to um, tell me what you think of my blogs and how it affects you and your life. And I received a comment about what I said about backseat drivers. And they said, why don't you write about that? Why don't you talk more about the backseat drivers in our life? So. This week I wrote, who is your backseat driver? It's kind of a follow up to who's chauffeuring your life with a different twist. Instead of um, allowing our stories and the things that we tell ourselves to be true or not true or the things that happen to us run our life and guide our life, I wrote about people. Other people who jump in our backseat and tell us what to do. And it was very fascinating to me as I wrote it. It turned out to be a, quite a long piece because I took different um, avenues. <laughs> talk, car talk. I took different avenues when I wrote it. For example, it doesn't have to be somebody that just tells you, you should do this for a career and you should do this and you should go to this school or this is what you should do with your life and sometimes it is those backseat drivers can be very forceful and guide us into a path in our life that isn't necessarily where we want to be and I talked about that I talked about how you need to take control and think about what it is that your soul wants and your soul's GPS should guide you and tell you where you need to go because that's how you'll be happy and fulfilled and that's how you will find the work that you're really meant to do. The other part of it that I talked about was how sometimes people don't even realize they're doing it but they control us and we feel like a puppet and we feel like we can't cut the strings and the reality is we really are the only ones that can cut those strings and I also made a strong comment that we blame it on other people, that it is our backseat driver that's causing us all the problems, but the reality is we allow it. We allow other people to control our lives and push our buttons and cause us to do things that maybe we don't want to do. So I outlined a few specific examples. For example, if you're always loaning people money, whether they're friends or family, and you think, oh, I'm just going to loan it to them so they can get on their feet, but it never happens, and then they come back and need more money and more money, and I said, stop writing checks. I have this saying that I learned a long time ago that if you stop giving advice, you can stop writing checks. Because if you give advice to people and then they say, well, that'd be great, 
but I can't afford to do it. And then you write a check. Stop giving advice and you stop writing checks. But in this piece, I was talking about how if you are loaning people money and you expect a different outcome and it never happens, then stop loaning them money. It's not going to change. I also gave the example of, you know, people that are always late, and I don't mean five minutes late. I'm guilty of that. Oftentimes, I'm five minutes late. But people that are historically late and stand you up, you've got a dinner date or you've got plans and they either don't show up or they're very, very late. But you see, we allow that. We get mad, it pushes our buttons, but we're the ones that allow that because we wait and wait and wait. And there's never any consequence for the other person and or obligation or responsibility on their side. And why should there be? They're in the back seat where it's cushy. They've got a great seat. They don't have any obligations. They've got a great seat. They're comfortable back there. And we allow them to be back there. So we allow them to be late over and over again. And we wait and inside it just digs at us and we get angry. It's our backseat driver. We're allowing them to drive our life. Just leave. Wait, you know, 15 minutes I think is a reasonable amount of time to wait for somebody and then leave. Because then they have a consequence. If they know they can show up a half an hour late or 45 minutes late every time and you're always going to be there, there's no consequence. So they'll keep doing it over and over again and we allow that backseat driver to control us. I listed some other um, examples in that writing and I'm sure there's some that you can see and you'll see yourself, maybe you'll see yourself as a person that's allowing the backseat driver in your world and maybe you'll see yourself as the backseat driver. Because these it happens sometimes and they don't know they're doing it. You know, you have been such a kind and wonderful person to them that they expect it. They know you're always going to be there. You're always going to help them. You're always going to give, give, give. And that's the pattern that's been set up. That's the pattern that we set up with them. That they know it's going to happen and we always do it. And maybe we always get that grind where we get frustrated and upset and we think this is enough. And maybe they do something for you once in a while, but it's not a reciprocal relationship. And I make that very clear in my writing that I'm not talking about a loving mutual relationship where the give and take is reciprocal and you do wonderful things for them and they do wonderful things for you. And of course you will always be there for them. Of course you will always love them. And of course you will always give, give, give to them because you are receiving in return. The backseat drivers I'm talking about in this writing are the ones that never give in return. But they always have an expectation of you being there to pick them up, take care of them, and always will be there to give. And they don't have a responsibility on their side to reciprocate. That's the kind of backseat drivers I'm talking. That is not healthy. And the other thing I ask you to do in the writing was look at your relationships with your backseat driver and are you in a pattern where sometimes you break free, you get so frustrated and you break free and that lasts a few days or a few weeks or maybe even a month but then you slide right back into that relationship doing the same things over and over again and getting the same response. Nothing. I also ask you to analyze that for codependency. Because you see, sometimes we get something for being the martyr. We get some kind of self-satisfaction because we are good people. We are good people if we give and do things for others, and that's true. But if you become a martyr and you do it over and over and over again, sometimes you slip into that victimization where you feel like you're a victim. I know, I know I shouldn't, 
but I'm going to, it's never going to change, but this is my stock in life, I'm going to do it. We fall into that and what happens is it becomes kind of a codependent relationship because they expect it of you and obviously you're getting something back from doing it. And so I ask you to analyze that, what are you getting back? For being this martyr and being the person that always gives, always let that backseat driver run your life. The last example I gave was, are you in a place in your life and you're only there because somebody told you that's where you should be? For example, if you're a teacher because your mom told you, you should grow up and be a teacher. Or if you're a pharmacist because your mom told you you should be a pharmacist. Or whatever it is, or you know, your dad wanted you to follow in his footsteps and take over the family business and that's not what you wanted to do. If you're in a position in life, you're following a life path because somebody told you that's where you should be, maybe it's time to reevaluate that because that backseat driver is telling you where you should be and what you should be doing. And maybe you need to talk about it for yourself. Maybe it's not where you need to be. Maybe you need to let your soul's GPS take over and navigate your life so that you end up where you want to be. So here's my heart to heart about the writing. Who's your backseat driver? I hope you enjoy it. I hope that um, it gave you something to think about. And I hope that you comment. I post this up on my Facebook page and so I will comment on everything that you say. In fact, sometimes I'll write a blog if you request it. That's what happened this week. Somebody said write about this and I did. So I'm so glad that you joined me. I'm glad that you watched this after the fact, after it's posted. I wish you a very wonderful day. Think about those backseat drivers in your life. Thanks for joining my Heart to Heart with Penny. I'm Penny Hunt, and thanks for watching.